All right, it is time for another Out of the Park 22 video. In this video, I'm gonna be taking a look at more of your questions about how MLB history played out when I resimmed from 1984 to 2021. If you haven't seen the previous videos, this video can still make sense to you. You don't have to necessarily have seen the other ones. Uh, if you seen, have seen the other ones, uh, today I'm gonna to answer more of your questions about the sim. So people who didn't see the other episodes, basically what I did was I uh, started an out of the park sim in 1984 and simmed it up to 2021, and then went through and showed things that I found interesting about uh, the, uh, the new results in our new history, and then also answered questions that people had about how different players did. And in the last video, there were more questions, so I figured I would uh, cover those today. So to start, I want to uh, go to um, something that Benjamin pointed out in the comments of the last video about Troy Tulowitzki, who we looked at, who had an absolutely terrible career here. Um, and in 2010, Tulowitzki played in Colorado, and he somehow managed to put up a 286 slug in 548 plate appearances with Coors as his home, home uh, field, which is just impressively awful. Uh, but as Benjamin pointed out, he had a 33 WRC plus, and in 548 plate appearances, his war was only negative 0.4, which you think it might be way worse. Um, also, shout out to his WRC plus of two across 330 plate appearances here. Goodness gracious. I wonder what the record is for lowest like OPS plus and WRC plus uh, with over 2,000 plate appearances. Good Lord. Uh, so anyways, but Benjamin pointed out his defense must have been pretty good because his war is relatively okay compared to i mean it's bad it's terrible but compared to this wrc plus and ops plus uh not as bad as we might think so uh good point here that i should have checked out these fielding stats so in 2010 in colorado he put up a zone rating of 9.3 and a defensive efficiency of 1055 so yeah he was he was a very good fielder that year uh, he didn't win the gold glove you know certainly this isn't like an astronomical zone rating but it, it kind of shows why uh, he was able to be, uh, well, I don't know, right the word. I mean, he's not playable. He's not good. He's not decent. He's still terrible. But I guess it's why his war wasn't like negative seven, you know, not really that low, but you get my point. Um, so thank you, Benjamin. That was, that was a good point. Uh, so let's go next to Andy. So Andy wanted to know about... Uh, some guys who went to Japan and Korea and also some guys who came over to MLB. Um, so the original request was for how Eric Thames played out. Um, and let's see. So Eric Thames entered MLB in 2011, which is his real life year. Um, and let's see, did he ever go overseas? Um, no, I'm actually, I don't think I turned on um, any of the leagues for overseas from this to keep the file size smaller. But anyways, how Thames did in the majors. So he had a couple decent seasons. I mean, uh, 2.1 war was his career high. This 145 OPS plus is great. I mean, he's only a part-timer, maybe a platoon guy or something. I don't know. Maybe he only played, uh, maybe played strong side platoon, played against righties. Uh, and then it looks really like you know, I don't know why he's still rolling out there with this many plate appearances. It's like a Tula Witsky thing all over again. The White Sox just couldn't let go here in 2016 with a 66 OPS plus and negative 1.3 war. Uh, yeah. And, and I guess uh, to to Benjamin's point, I guess another reason why Tula Witsky's war would have been decent, like compared to teams here relatively with their offensive performances is uh, Tula playing shortstop. So war likes shortstops basically more than corner outfielders i guess it's the simplest way to put it that's a sloppy explanation but you get my point uh let's see let's look at let's see a couple of these some of these guys you asked about i'd never heard of andy uh and you're just popping a bunch of them out here off the top of your head so let's look at uh bobby rose who i've never heard of <laughs> uh bobby rose came in to mlb in 1989, what was his draft? He was a round three pick in 1988 by the uh, Tigers. Oops. And he never really did anything. His career high in plate appearances was 68. 
Um, I mean, now he did put up a 205 WRC plus and 12 plate appearances in 1990, but yeah, he never really uh, got much time anywhere and then bounced around the minor leagues for a while. Um, real life. They, oh, I guess they don't have, if he did, I'm, I'm thinking from your question that he played overseas, but they don't have that here, I guess, in the real life, um, real life section of out of the park. Okay. And you also wanted to know about some guys like Hideo Nomo and Nomo, uh, he, I first want to draw your attention to this rookie season where he put up 7.9 war as a member of the Reds and a 2.82 ERA and did not win rookie of the year. So that's interesting. Like, <laughs> I mean, that's his rookie year. I know he's 26 and he came from overseas, but he was still, el I don't know why he wouldn't be eligible. Um, yeah, let's, let's look at that awards and wait, what year was it again? Good job, Pat. Uh, 95. So the NL rookie of the year in 1995 rookie of the year is this third column we're going to scroll on down 1995 rookie of the year was jason giambi oh my lord look at these numbers a 400 out 400 500 763 <laughs> slash line 51 home runs and 12.6 war are you kidding me what look at this he hit 400 i mean he was in course but he had 680 plate appearances hit 400. He had a 763 slug. <laughs> oh my goodness. Strikeout walk rate was better. His walk rate was better than the strikeout rate. He led the league in war, WRC plus, home runs, RBI, runs, average, on base, slugging. Wow. So yeah, he won a triple crown. Uh, I mean, that's one of the best seasons in the history of the league. <laughs> like... Was that not on the single season? The 12.6 war wasn't a record breaker? Like, we looked at all this. This is, that's an obscene season. Oh, Babe Ruth had 13.41. Okay. So nothing from that season was on here for Giambi. Wow. Okay. <laughs> this is, this is amazing. So what did he end up doing for his career? So those were his two best seasons for sure, but he still was a five plus, six plus war player into his early 30s and then was still really good later in his career. Did he make the haul? Yeah, he made the haul first time, 96.5%. Ended up with 518 home runs, 2,544 hits. 87.6 war, a WRC plus of 157, career average of 298. Um, really trailed off in terms of the average here. But wow, that's. Uh, I'm glad we got to this through <laughs> looking at uh, Hideo Nomo. That's crazy. That is a crazy season from Giambi. So, um, all right. So, some other people that Andy wanted to see uh, Aoki. Uh, Never really did much. Put up 4.6 total war. Uh, his career high was a 108 WRC plus and his age 32 season for the Tigers. Yeah, he just kind of got old because he came over um, so late. And then, uh, of course, we have time to check on Hideki Matsui. So he came in as a Padre, entered the MLB in 2003. And I think they all just come in to the draft. Yeah, they do. 2002 is the 12th overall pick from the Padres. Um, looks like he made one all-star team in 2004. Um, okay. I mean, that's an okay season. I think uh, He obviously didn't have very good defense. Uh, 127 OPS plus, 2.1 war. I mean, that's a league average war. Who knows what he's doing at the all-star break, though. Uh, and we can see what Dice K did, too. Uh, um let me think. How do you spell his name? It's like, it's like a spelling test when you're doing it, when you're recording something. <laughs> Got to think about it. Uh, ooh, not, I don't know. I mean, let me go to the pitching stats page. Not really like a huge standout year here, right? Like this year's okay. 3.2 war. Yeah, his career high was 3.2 war. He had a 3.79 ERA. He only his career high was 209 innings. Okay, he threw 
2,354 innings. So uh, he had an ERA plus of 88 and a FIP minus of 109. So a solidly below average pitcher. <laughs> Real solid at being below average. Uh, all right. Next, Ryan wanted to know about Mario, Mariano Rivera because um, you didn't see him in, on the save leaders board. Oh, I guess I should have put in his full name. Huh? There he is. Uh, so let's go to the basic pitching stats. Okay, so he did enter as a closer in 1995 with the Padres after being drafted 38th overall by them. And um, the back button this year, I'm still not used to it. I'm still not used to it. It has its advantages. There are times I like it, but I'm just still not used to it. Uh, so he saved 354 games. He had a 3.79 ERA. Uh, he made 1,077 appearances, all of them relief. So real life stats, he saved 652. He made 10 starts um, and appeared in 1,115 games. This is not right. He did not enter at age 28. That's off. Um, I don't know what the age is that Mariano Rivera entered MLB. I mean, 95 sounds right to me, but 28, there's like, I mean, I don't have it in front of me. I guess perhaps I, I overlooked the fact that Mariano Rivera was 28 when he entered the league, but no, that can't be right. Because I don't think he was 46 when he was tired. He was in his 40s, but he wasn't that old. Something's off there. Um, all right. So Mr. Hart, 12, wanted me to uh, look at the Astros, which I suppose we can do without mentioning anything about banging trash cans. Can we? Can we do that? I, I, I guess. Um, just kidding, you Astros fans. Um, it's not your fault that your team did that. Uh, so from ninety from eighty four forward, so they went on quite a run here. Nineteen ninety through two thousand three, they made the postseason every year, but one. And in that season, they still won ninety two games. Uh, so they didn't win fewer than ninety two games during this run, and they won two World Series. Um, so. In terms of who were the best players on these teams, so 90 and 93, let's look at it this way. What way are we going to look at this? Yeah, let's. So 90 and 93, let's look at their positional starters. Um, so they've got Mike McFarlane. Oh, Mark Grace is their first baseman. Bob Meacham. Is this Carlos Baerga? Oh, yeah, Carlos Baerga is great, man. I really enjoyed watching him play. Uh, 15.4 war. He was a, a bit better in real life. Uh, oh, Dale, I'm not going to say his name right. Swaim. Swaim. You got, yeah, that's not right, but you, you get it. Uh, Cal Daniels, who was a legend in this sim. Uh, Kevin Bass. Wait, like, no. Okay. I was thinking, who was the first baseman that the Yankees had back in this era? Wasn't that, was that a Kevin Bass too? Again, I know you guys will let me know. Sometimes just think aloud here because <laughs> you guys are much better historians than me. I kind of vaguely recall things sometimes. And then Mike Davis was the right fielder. On the 93 team, they had Todd Pratt catching, Grace again, Meacham again, Swaim again. Is this Royce Clayton? Oh, yeah, Royce Clayton at shortstop. Cal Daniels, this with Bonds. Barry Bonds in center field. Uh, here's his career. We looked at him a little bit last time, 559 home runs. Uh so he played in Houston and put up 9.3 war at the age of 28 uh, in that on that championship uh, team. He won three MVPs. So Bonds had a really good career. And, oh, is this, wait, Tony Gwynn and Barry Bonds in the same outfield? That's awesome. That's really cool. Um, now, he was 33 by this point, but he was still pretty good. And Gwynn ended up with 2,877 hits. Fewer than his 3,141 he had in real life. Um, and then your pitchers on these teams, let's just see who your like number one starter was uh, in 2010 and 13. <laughs> Justin Verlander, that's funny. Uh, so he came over much younger at the age of 27 from Seattle. And he spent two seasons before he uh, hightailed it out of there for St. Louis. In 2013, uh, you had Orioles legend Jason Hamill, uh, who's still pitching in this sim. Um, as your number one starter. So he had a decent season. And yeah, so that's the that's the gist there, uh, Mr. Hart, of the uh, of the Astros. Now, Teddy had an interesting question. He basically wanted to know like who the GOAT is in this sim or who the best players at each position are. Um, 
best possible lineup during this time. I, yeah, I, I don't have that together for you, but I can show you some of that stuff uh, that you're asking about. So let's go to the Hall of Fame and we're going to go to um, players. I don't know why I did it this way. Uh, retired and active players. And we're going to go to career time frame and just look at each position real quick. And I want to go to the hitting sets that I like. So the best catcher in terms of war was Darren Dalton with 88.9. What do you have in real life? 26.4. So he just was just a tad better in this sim. So Darren Dalton, according to war, is far and away your best catcher. Jason, catcher. Jason Kendall, Mike Piazza uh, round out the top three. Uh, first base, you've got Musial. Bonds qualifies as a first baseman here. I guess he played some later in his career. Ellis Burks with 108.9 war. Uh, some other names, Ortiz, Troy Glaus, Mark McGuire. Uh, there's your first base leaderboard. Second base, uh, Rodriguez qualifies as a second baseman in this one. Chipper Jones, I don't think we've looked at him yet. So he came up with Detroit. He played until the age of 44. Uh, he put up 116.4 war, 535 home runs, almost 3,500 hits, a nice 34.69. Very nice. Uh, never won an MVP but made a ton of all-star games, won a ton of silver sluggers. Uh, and we got Roberto Alomar, Derek Jeter. All right, let's check out shortstop. Yeah, A-Rod. Gary Sheffield, noted shortstop Gary Sheffield. I guess, did he play shortstop his whole career in this? Yeah, he did. He stuck at shortstop, which he came up as, I'm pretty sure, in real life. But then obviously was got pretty big, got too bulky. Uh, Hanley Ramirez is here. Chipper Jones, Hannes Wagner, Juan Uribe. 104.7 war. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that's more than he had in real life. Yeah, 15.2. Wow. Juan Uribe. He won five gold gloves, a bunch of All-Star games. He made some silver sluggers. He had a 9.2 war season in 2009. So that's fun. This is a good idea, Teddy. I don't know why I didn't do this originally. Just look at it by position. I kind of looked at it by all players and, like, categories. Um. So we did third. Did we do third base? No, I don't think we did. I skipped over. Jim Tomey, Craig Jeffries, Troy Glouse again. Uh, so Jim Tomey, we looked at him in the last one, I think. Greg Jeffries, I don't remember if we looked at him. Uh, but 325 home runs, 104.6 war. He had a season with 8.6 war in 1997 with the Reds. Way to go, Greg Jeffries. Uh, and then, let's see, left field, Ted Williams. Okay, he's pretty. I heard he was pretty good. Bernie Williams, Ellis Burks. Trout's still playing, I think. Yeah, he's only 30. He's in Houston. He's only already got 99.8 war. Bobby Abreu, what a legend. Uh, center field. We got Ty Cobb, Willie Mays, J.D. Drew, who we covered in a previous episode. Um, Puckett, Dykstra, Darren Erstad with 81.4 war. Shannon Stewart. Uh, and then we go to right field. And a bunch of guys who did not play in the sim, like Ruth, Aaron, Robinson, Ott. Uh, we got Trout, Manny Ramirez, uh, Pete Rose, Vlad, the senior, Lenny Dykstra, Carl Everett is an interesting name to see. Milton Bradley, I know we covered before. Uh, so, yeah, we can also check uh, starters and go to pitching war. Um, Cy Young, Walter Johnson, John Smoltz we covered with his nine Cy Youngs. Uh, how about our war? Cy Young, Wayne Maddox. Robin Roberts, Don Sutton. So there you go, Teddy. That's uh, that's the gist of the the war leaderboards. I'll uh, I'll leave it up to you who the goat was or what the best lineup would be. But uh, hopefully that's some some of the info you were looking for. Uh, Stanley, good to see you there. Asking a question. Uh, I wanted to know about Ichiro, and Ichiro came over and came up with the Reds in two thousand one. And he posted three consecutive 200-plus hit seasons. He led the league in hits his first two seasons, put up a bunch of war, great OPS+, plus, great batting average, all around solid, uh, but kind of trailed off early. Really, after the age of 30, he only had one of his final five seasons was good, this one here in 2007. He ended with 17.1 war and only 1461 in terms of MLB hits. So not the best uh, career for Ichiro compared to, uh, compared to real life. So that's, uh, that's the end of the questions that you guys asked on this one. Uh, I might do another fun episode or two of this where I look at some uh, interesting things that I found in the sim. 
but uh yeah hopefully this was uh interesting for you guys to dig into this deeper i appreciate all the questions it's fun to have like a more interactive episode like this and um find things like uh jason giambi batting 400 for colorado in his rookie season so thanks for watching uh i will talk to you guys in the next video